Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial video on how to soundproof your studio. Today we're going to be talking about a question that a lot of students in our community have been asking me, which is where do you exactly use acoustic caulk in building your soundproof studio? So today I'm going to go over all the places you will definitely use it and some places you may want to use it when building your soundproof studio. Before we jump in, I want to say I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproof workshop. This goes really in depth so you can have 45 minutes of teaching that goes over exactly all the steps you need to soundproof your studio. I highly recommend it if you are on this journey. It is far more specific than just watching endless YouTube videos. So you can check that out at soundproofyourstudio.com. All right, let's jump into the lesson. <laughs> So the first place you want to use acoustic caulk is where all of your walls meet the floor. So once you've put on your two layers of drywall, you can then run a bead of acoustic caulk along the bottom where your drywall meets your concrete floor, or if you're building a subfloor on top of your existing floor in your house, you would then connect the drywall to the floor. I will say that there is a practice of leaving an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch air gap below the drywall where you're between the drywall and where the floor meets and then placing backer rod in that space and then filling that space with acoustic caulk. This will essentially decouple the floor and the wall even more. With my studio, we had a concrete floor that's just attached to the earth, so I wasn't so worried about sound traveling from the concrete up into my walls. However, if I were to build this on the second story of a house, I would definitely use the method of leaving an air gap to try to decouple that wall as much as possible. The next place you want to use acoustic caulk is where all of your drywall on your walls meets in the corners. So every single corner you want to just run a bead of acoustic caulk along the outside of the drywall. Again, if you're using the hat channel system on your walls, you can add some extra strength by leaving a little bit of an eighth inch or a sixteenth inch air gap between each layer of drywall and then placing backer rod in there and then running acoustic caulk along that gap as well to seal it fully and make it airtight. Again, leaving these gaps is not necessarily mandatory. I didn't do it in my studio and I turned out just fine. However, it is a great idea if you want to get just a little more insulation and make sure that your walls are not touching each other. The third place where you wanna use acoustic caulk is gonna be where your walls and your ceiling meet. So any place where you have drywall along the rim where your wall and your ceiling meets, you wanna run a line of acoustic caulk along that. If you're using the hat channel system for your ceiling, it is a good idea to create that little eighth inch air gap space we had talked about before, put the backer rod in, do a line it with acoustic caulk, and then do the second layer of drywall, create that little uh, eighth inch to 16th inch space, and put the backer rod in, and then put acoustic caulk there. That'll essentially help with decoupling the ceiling drywall from your wall drywall. If you're using hat channels, it's not a perfect system. Technically, some sound could still travel through the acoustic clips, so this will just help even more so. If you're doing a fully uh, decoupled ceiling structure from your actual roof or the ceiling above, then decoupling the drywall there is not as important since you've already decoupled um, your drywall uh, ceiling from the outside structure by creating a, a separate beam across there. So keep that in mind as you are designing and building your studio. Lastly, you can use acoustic caulk in a little more creative way around any holes, small holes or cracks that you find in your structure. You want to make sure that the inside of your room is 100% airtight. So any place that you have a wall outlet, uh, any sort of protrusion, like um, for example, we ran ethernet through the wall and it was just like a small hole, but I made sure to put acoustic caulk around the ethernet cable uh, just to try to make it as airtight as possible around all of our electrical boxes uh, where the drywall and the electrical box meet. If there's any gap there, you can run a bead of acoustic caulk around the electrical boxes as well with your light fixtures where the J box and the 
actual drywall meet. If there's any small gap whatsoever, you can run acoustic caulk around there to make sure it is absolutely airtight. Remember that you're gonna be putting putty pads around the back of all your electrical boxes, which will help with sound not traveling through them, but you still wanna get all the little places where the drywall and the electrical boxes meet to make sure that it is in fact fully soundproof and airtight. All right, I hope you guys have found this short little video helpful. I hope it clears up some of the confusion about where to use acoustic caulk exactly. I know it's not usually explained well on the internet and in books, and it's kind of brushed over like, hey, you should just know this, obviously, right? But it's not so simple, and so definitely reach out with comments uh, below if you have any questions, and uh, check out that free soundproofing workshop for sure. If you are on the soundproofing journey, I can't recommend it enough. 40 minutes of in-depth teaching going over exactly how to design your soundproof studio. You can go to that at soundproofyourstudio.com. Thanks so much for listening or watching, and I'll see you all next Monday, same place, same time.